Hey guys, welcome to Motivation Monday. Um, I was on live earlier on uh, on Facebook here. This is actually just the recording. Uh, there was a bit of a technical uh, glitch, I guess you could say, with the with the recording. So I'm having to redo it here. Uh, so if you're watching this, you're, you're watching it after the fact. But um, either way, I want to I want to welcome you to Monday. This is New Year's Eve. Uh, so depending on what day you're watching this, uh, that's when I'm filming it. And um, you know, really, I think it's a good time of year to talk about goals and you know New Year's resolutions that people make, or at least used to make. I think a lot of people focus more on the idea of goal setting now. Um, and I want to give you a, basically a way to set goals properly. Now, there's a lot to it. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. There's um, we want to be able to set goals in a way that is actually very um, inspiring. That creates a, a vision for us. You know, I know in the Bible it says uh, without vision, the people perish. Now, the idea of vision to me is not just what we want, but find out what we're really capable of, what we're called to in life, by life. And, uh, you know, that vision should ignite a spark inside of us, you know, a, a, a flame, a passion. You know, I think if it doesn't, then we're missing something. And, uh, you know, so, so that's one of the first things that I like to do with people in one-on-one -on -one sessions is find out what they're really after, what they really want. Now, sometimes people don't know what they want. That's okay, too. Um, but what I like to tell people is, you know, that I'm there, at least in the one-on-one -on -one setting where I get to work with people, to help them go deeper than they ever have, pull out things they never even knew were there, and say, wow, that's Tim. Wow, that's Sarah. That's awesome. So that's the idea. That's what I see as being vision. And you know, I think it's important to set the goals based on that vision and then develop the action plan from there. Um, you know, one thing too that I've that I've been shown, that I've been taught is that and that I've experienced as being true is that we're there's probably there's one thing that psychologically speaking, there's one thing that we're better at than 90% of the population. Spiritually. You know, you could say that that's your purpose. I, I believe we all have like a spiritual thumbprint, something unique to us that we're here to fulfill, that we're here to do. And um, I think one of the, you know, it's critical for us to find that. It's fairly easy to do, to find that, to hone in on that, to experience and embrace that, and to build the vision based on that because everything tends to line up a lot easier. Now, Life is life. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be, you know, things go wrong. So how we deal with those things, how we move through them, how we break through them, how we transform them, um, changes depending on where we're at and, and, um, and how, how much we're able to align with that bigger purpose. There's a little bit more to it that I'll get into in a moment. So what I want to do today, what I did do earlier in the live version of this is give you a a very basic way of tapping into that vision of setting some basic goals and some action steps to move you towards that. I also want to talk about the, you know, the, some of the biggest challenges that people face along the way and how to begin to move through that and give you a couple other options to expand on what we do here. So I do hope you have a pen and paper ready. Um, you know, it's going to be really, really important. You know, I, I can remember, uh, you know, everyone's different. Like I say, when, when they come to me for one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching, you know, some people know exactly what they want. Some people, most people have an idea what they want, but they actually realize that they're, they're limiting their, themselves and what they're capable of is a lot, a lot greater, a lot grander, a uh, lot more impactful, a lot more, um, they're capable of a lot more positive contribution to those around them. And a lot more fulfillment. You know, uh, Tony Robbins, I mentioned this in the live version, he has a, a saying, he says, success without fulfillment is still failure. And I believe that's true. So, you know, it's important that as we set goals, as we create a vision for ourselves, that we do so in a way that not only creates success, whatever that means to you, but that ultimately helps us become more fulfilled. This is important. You know, that fulfillment, really, why are you doing anything at all except to be fulfilled, ultimately? Whether you're giving, whether you're creating, whether you're, you know, building a business, whether you're selling a house, whether you're, you know, 
whatever, whether you're in a relationship. Ultimately, it's about being fulfilled. And, and you know, another truth you could say, or another, another um, inescapable fact of life, regardless of what you believe, is either we're growing or we're dying. There's no in between. You know, all you have to do is look to nature and you'll see that. You know, everything's growing or dying, growing or decaying. As human beings, it applies to us as well. Um, now, some people might be very, very happy with how things are in their life, and that's great. Some people are, you know, maybe, uh, you know, relatively happy, but they, they, there could be some improvements. Some people are really struggling, and they're ready for that breakthrough, ready for that transformation. Um, you know, I've experienced all three myself. You've been, I think all of us have, and, or most of us have anyway. And even if you're really happy, if you're not doing something to grow, if you're not growing as a human being, as an individual, if you're not growing uh, in your profession, in your relationships, you know, in your personal life, if you're not growing spiritually, then you're dying. There's no, there's no in between. So, you know, I, I actually have just flashed on a story. I shared the story in the live version. A client of mine came to me because he actually was very successful, very successful at all walks of life. Um, but very unfulfilled and he wanted to find out what he really wanted. He didn't know. And, you know, to be fair, it took him a few months to really start to see some change. Um, you know, initially whenever I would ask him any kind of question, his answer would be, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, very gradually we employed a few strategies. I helped him move away from the, I don't know answer. And you know, I think a couple of months into it, he, uh, he started to, he didn't realize this until later on, I started to see it. He would come to this session with you know, a new level of excitement, like a new activity or a new idea or a new vision, all these things that were starting to come into play that were, wouldn't really, were way in the background previously. And as this happened, I saw him become more and more enlivened, more and more passionate about life, everything he was looking for. So it's amazing what can happen. So you could know, kind of have an idea what you want. You could know exactly what you want. You could not have a clue. Either way, you know, I think it behooves us to find something, to create what's called a, a compelling future. To find that vision that draws us forward. Okay. Uh, again, no matter where you are. So one of the first things I want you to do, if uh, I'm hoping you have a pen and paper here, and take you through a very, very simple exercise. Um, now, obviously, if we were working one-on-one, -on -one, I'd expand on this and explore this in much greater detail because uh, the goal is to ignite that spark of passion in you. Or maybe you already have it, then it's to expand it and clarify it. Depends where you are. Um, but basically, what I want to do you know, is help you uncover that vision. So some people, when they start with me, they want to have like a happy, romantic relationship. I can think of numerous people that come to me for that, looking for the right girl or, or the right guy, so to speak. There's, there's a, actually a process behind that too. Um, little hint, focus on, if you're looking, looking for that, focus on becoming the right girl or the right guy first. Uh, some people want a happy romantic relationship. Some people, uh, they, want, they want success in their business. They want to take it to a new level. They want to go from six to seven figures. They want to become a better leader, develop a team, whatever. Some people want to make a positive contribution to other people around them, to their families, to their communities, uh, organizations, whatever. Some people want to just be better parents, you know, to, to raise their kids in a way that, you know, mitigates a lot of, or limits a lot of the uh, um, limiting beliefs and, and patterns that we fall into. They want to become better parents. They want to raise their kids to be the very, very best they can be. Some people, you know, they have a health goal primarily. Now, you know, you might want to, some people want to be more energetic. They want to be healthier, um, lose some weight, whatever it might be. Some people want all of the above. So no matter where you're coming from, it, you know, it's all a good starting place. And my objective as a strategic interventionist, as a coach, a results coach, is to help you, first and foremost, understand what you want and what you're really capable of, what life wants of you, to help you accomplish a set and accomplish the goals based on that, no matter what they might be. 
That's really what it comes down to. So what I want you to do with your pen and paper, I want you to, to well, let's, let's do it this way. I want you to, this is what I had people do on the live version, write down a few words or a few sentences about how you want your life to be five years from now. And I'm talking more your ideal life, not, not, not like, you know, magical thinking kind of, kind of stuff that, you know, the, the implausible, but within the realm of the plausible, what your ideal life would look like. You know, a few, a few sentences, a few words, um, whatever that might be. So take a minute, write that down. So for example, you might say, well, I'm happily married or I've got a six or seven figure income or, you know, I'm healthier than I've ever been. I have vibrant health. I'm very active in my community, whatever that might be. So just take a moment, write that down. Now, the next step, and I mean, if I'm going a little bit fast here, you can always pause the video and come back to it. I want you to think for a minute, in order for your life to be the way you want it five years from now, what has to happen one year from now? What would be some benchmark goals, some accomplishments that would tell you you're on your way? that would indicate to you you're making progress towards your bigger goal. So I want you to write down a few words or again, a few sentences. So for example, you might say something like, um, I lost 20 pounds or, um, you know, I met the man or woman of my dreams. I changed careers, um, started my own business. So you get the idea here. So just take a few minutes, write down, you know, three, four, five things that would need to happen one year from today to let you know that you're on your way to your five-year goals. And those five-year goals, again, you're looking at three, four, five things on that list initially. And like I said, I, you know, if I was working with you one-on-one, -on -one, we would actually expand on that. We'd extrapolate, you know, we'd, we'd clarify all the details so that it becomes very, very exciting, very inspiring for you. But let's start here. Now, if you have worked with me in the past, then you kind of know how to do this and you can use this as a starting point to launch for the next year or if you're even if you're presently working with me. Now, the next step, I want you to think for a minute um, for your life to be the way you want it one year from now. So to hit those benchmark goals to see that progress. What has to happen this month? So this month being the month of January. What has to happen this month? Come up with a minimum of three things, three steps that you would need to accomplish. Again, you can write a few words. So, um, you know, it might be something like, well, making a certain phone call or setting a certain meeting, for instance, or, you know, maybe going out on that blind date you were putting off or, you know, sign up for the gym or a personal trainer. Sign up with a coach, you know, any number of things, whatever your first three steps would be towards those year long benchmark goals that will lead you toward the five year vision. Again, you can, once the video is done, you can pause the video or once the video is done, you can go back and expand on this. I encourage you to do that. But I want you to write a, again, just a few words that would, a few things that would have to happen this month. And these would be like your first steps towards building a life you want towards taking charge of who you want to be and how you want to live. So that's the first step as a coach that I help you take the go through, help you create the vision that you want. Now there's a, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of other things that I would do with you if I was working with you that we really go in depth with that. But this is the first step. The second step is to identify, uh, well, sorry, the part of the first step is to find the vision, identify the steps to get in there. The second step is to identify the challenges that you might encounter along the way to fulfilling your vision. Okay. So 
for most people, the biggest challenge that they face is what they focus on, what they think about most of the time, what they believe, and as a result, what they feel emotionally. I talked about this a little bit last week. Last week I talked about stress, the week before I talked about depression. Um, and last week I gave you, you know, a, a process called the three P's, if you got the chance to be on their live or watch the video afterwards, to essentially reprogram your brain. Okay, so let's say, focus-wise, let's say, I'll give you some examples. Um, let's say you're writing a, um, a licensing exam for something. And you're thinking to yourself, it's too difficult, or I can't focus, or I'm not good enough at this. What are your chances for success? Pretty slim, right? Or let's say, uh, you're, let's say you're looking for a romantic partner, and you're thinking, you know, I'm too old or I'm too fat, or I'm too skinny, or I'm not attractive enough, or I'm too shy. Again, what are your chances for success if you're convincing yourself of these things? Slim to none, right? So the second step, essentially, once we have that vision and the action plan to, to get there, and I'm giving you a little taste of that today, the second step is to guide you away from those self-defeating thoughts, those beliefs, and those any accompanying, accompanying emotions. So guide you away from that self-defeating story and show you how you can essentially trick yourself initially into believing and thinking the thoughts that will make it possible for you to attain your vision, your, your goals, your vision. Okay. So there's a few ways that I do that. Um, I'm going to say it's not easy because a lot of these thoughts, these beliefs, these stories, they've been with us, they've been programmed into us for pretty much our entire lives by, you know, well-meaning parents or, or maybe, maybe not so well-meaning, depending on the background, parents, teachers, you know, other adults, other people in authority, usually outside of our, our awareness or quite often. But the truth is, while it's not easy, it's also not that difficult. You know, a very simple approach, when a very common approach, is to, you know, for instance, have a consequence that involves some sort of, you know, mild pain or unpleasantness, so that you'd rather give up the thoughts, you'd rather give up the beliefs or the story than experience the consequence. Make sense? So that's a simple way. There's quite a few ways that I do this with people. Um, now, I shared a story in the live version today that, that I think I actually might have shared last week or the week before, but it's still applicable. Um, you know, we've got probably dozens of stories that I like to share, but this one was from a co colleague of mine. This was a few years back. Um, so forgive me if I am repeating the story, but it's worth mentioning for what we're talking about right here, the second part to what I'm doing. So he was working with an, an obese woman. She had come to him to help him to help her lose weight. And she basically said to him, I'll do whatever you tell me but I have to let you know I can't give up my addiction. I've tried everything, but I can't give it up. He said, okay, well, what's your addiction? And she says, well, yeah, I'm addicted to cookies. I've tried everything, I can't give it up. They went to the doctor together to confirm all the, all the health risks that were involved that she was facing. And again, she re reiterated to both of them. She said, I'll do whatever you tell me, but I can't give up my addiction to cookies. Right. So the first session comes around, and you know they're exploring what she wants, challenges, uh, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And she says it to him again. I will do whatever you tell me to do. I just can't give up to my addiction to cookies. I've tried everything. So he says, "Okay, um, tell you what. Let's at least have some good come of this addiction. Every time you eat more than two cookies, which is most days." I want you to, you're gonna bake two dozen cookies from scratch, no mixes. And you're gonna take those two dozen cookies and deliver them to a local women's shelter. I'll give you the address. She was very reluctant, but she did agree. Um, and so sure enough, she had to do this right away. Now, she was a very, very good baker. And um, so she would you know, deliver these cookies to the women's shelter. In a very short time, she made some, some powerful friendships there. And it was suggested to her that she start a mobile bakery. So she did. She did that with her grandkids.
and uh, start delivering to local farmers markets, building a successful little business in our own, uh, you know, in that regard. And so, in a very short short time, she had developed powerful friendships, a successful mobile bakery, and better relationships with her grandkids. Now, she got to the point where she's baking all the time, baking, you know, cookies, other baked goods, etc., but baking all day. So she's baking so much cookies that she started to get nauseated by the smell of cookies. She stopped eating them and lost the weight. Now, the reason I share this story, um, and I think I shared it, uh, I'm pretty sure I shared it actually last time for a similar reason, is that we talked about you know, the, the, the beliefs that cause our stress last time. In the same way, we all have, like I said earlier, we all have limiting thoughts, limiting beliefs or stories that we tell ourselves that for all intents and purposes seem true. They seem valid, seem factual. But the truth is they only become factual because we've invested so much into these stories. So like the lady, she believed she couldn't give up her addiction to cookies. She'd tried everything, but it turned out she could. She just needed a different approach that she hadn't thought of before. And it's very subtle because it wasn't told to her what was happening. So here's the second part. And I, I did touch on this last week, but, this, uh, but in a different way, it was related to stress. This is just in general. I want you to think about your goals, your vision, what you want. And see if you can't identify one, maybe two, um, limiting beliefs, limiting stories, or what we call negative incantations. Why? Because it essentially casts a spell over your life and what you're capable of doing when we believe these stories. So why don't you find one or two and write them down. So you might come up with things like, um, I can't do it, or I don't know how, or there's not enough time, or I'm too old. So some of the examples I used earlier. See if you can't identify one or two that you tend to um, tend to be your, your go-to phrases in your life. I can guarantee you that you're, they're there. You just got to find them. Once you once you can figure out what they are, write them down. Now the second step to that is I want you to think of. Um, well, let's go the polar opposite. That's what I did in the live version. Go with the polar opposite to what you wrote down. So something that, you know, if you take those one or two negative incantations, you find one or two uh, positive incantations that you can replace them with. So for example, I can do it, I can learn it, or I can apply myself to my goals, or, um, you know, I make time for the things that are important to me. Things like that. So in the next few days, I would encourage you that anytime the negative incantation creeps into your mind, that story, you immediately counter it with a positive incantation. You give it as much, you don't just repeat it, but you give it as much energy as possible. You really can try to convince yourself that it's true, even if you have to pretend. Use your whole body. Use your, you know, get excited with it, you know, or, or, or whatever, whatever that positive incantation should elicit within you, that emotion. It's the emotional side that matters. Uh, positive affirmation is good, but it's not enough. Positive thinking uh, doesn't work long term. What we want to do is take that positive thought, that positive incantation, and turn it into a spell to make it work, right? So you have to convince yourself that it's true. Now, if you really want to um, work on that, you can go back to last week's video on the three P's. Use the three P's to help you program this positive incantation, this new belief, this new story into your, into your mind. So it becomes much more automatic for you. I, I really encourage you to do that. So with that, you guys, I've got a couple things you can do. So like I said, number one, um, You've got your, your overall vision, five year, one year, one month. Okay, a few steps in there. Go back and clarify that, crystallize it. Make it as specific as you possibly can in each area. You know, think about how you feel when you, when you accomplish these things. Write that down, 
right? So that's step one. Step two, identifying the limiting or negative incantation, negative story, limiting story, countering that with the positive, and to actually really be effective with that, go back and watch the other video, do the three Ps with the positive. Oh, uh, on your paper, the one you, the negative you wrote down, you can cross that off or cut it out and burn it or shred it or do something to get rid of it as well. It can be very powerful. And then go back and use the three Ps from the last video, last week's video on, on stress management. And from there, if you're, if you've already been a client of mine, you'll have this. Um, if you haven't been a client of mine, you might have downloaded it, you might not. But in the description to this video, there's a link to download book one of Becoming Extraordinary. And it takes you through more exercises around beliefs, around your vision, around what I call your internal and your external goals, two different goals, um, in a way that if you get fully into it, should light you on fire. Should spark that, you know, find that spark, find that passion and ignite it. Uh, some, you know, create a, a plan to achieve that. So basically doing what we did today, but in more depth, okay? And then, you know, the, the final part of that, that workbook is some uh, exercises in mindfulness. Why? Because to really truly be effective in, you know, to bring out the best in us, to be truly effective, truly efficient, um, truly powerful, we have to be fully engaged in what we're doing. Most of us, most of the time, will be scattered in our own thinking, thinking about the thoughts or thinking thoughts of the past, about the future, about the thousand one things we have to do, whatever. What's not working, what's missing, what should be here, what shouldn't be here. Very rarely are we fully here. So the practice of mindfulness helps bring us back to this this moment only, this present moment, the only moment that we have any sort of power whatsoever. So the more we cultivate that, the more effective, more powerful we can be, the easier it is to realize our goals, to, to accomplish our goals. So workbook one takes you through exercises in all four areas, beliefs, vision, action, and mindfulness. So that's in the, in the description. The second part, if you haven't already, there's also a link to my Facebook group. Uh, if you're watching this, you're, you're a part of the Facebook page or maybe you're on YouTube. Apply to be part of the group every Friday at 9.30 PST. You know, again, barring a, a unforeseen circumstances like being away or, or sick or something. I'm on there to coach you one-on-one. -on -one. And it's not the same you know, necessarily as a coaching session because I can't talk to you, you know, I can't hear your voice or see you, if, you know, it's either phone or Skype that, that I use or FaceTime. But it's as close as we can get. You can type in comments, you can ask questions, and then I will answer them and, and potentially give you some, some work you can do. So it's, it's almost like being coached one-on-one. -on -one. So download the book, go join the group, um, and then uh, from there, I'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a great week, you guys.